So I've been hearing an interesting theory in regards to the misadventures of Edmund Wickenthorpe. That when the world goes red, when humanity decides to reveal its true face and goes feral, those who flee rather than fight are the smart ones. For their cowardice, they get to live to see another day, live to enjoy the spoils of tomorrow. Whereas the ones with courage, those who die fighting, defending their friends, family, and loved ones, are the ones who suffer an unimaginable fate. If I'm not mistaken, I think Emmon's story has a lesson to it. A terrible truth between courage and cowardice is unfolding. In this new world, my friends, the act of courage is only a fairy tale. A horror that doesn't care how you die, honorably or dishonorably. In this world, you're just meat. Ever thought of what might have happened if Edmund here had one shred of courage? He would have been dead, or worse. In this new world, it's the cowards who live longer, my friends, and why Edmund here is still alive. Edmund Wickenthorpe, two-time soul survivor. After waking from one of his perverted dreams, Edmund just couldn't keep his mind off of that woman's beautiful ass. That horse lady at the circus, Madame something. He just saw his classmates being raped and murdered before running and passing out in the bushes somewhere. And yet, Edmund still has these images of being fucked on a mountain of dead bodies by a sexy geek woman. I wonder if that makes him a pervert. Or could it be something that's tempting Edmund down a much darker path with so much spoils to indulge in? Remember my friends, Edmund doesn't want you to think he's a pervert. He's not a pervert, not a pervert. When going back and seeing the outcome, Edmund putting a nail in that coward's coffin, so far Edmund only counted 20 dead geeks, only half of his schoolmates accounted for. Katie Weiner, Jim Morgan, Joe Riggs are missing. So is Betty Ford. That worried him. Maybe they turn geek and are now going around killing and eating other people. I don't think Edmund can explain why, but something about all this. Walking over these dead bodies. He's proud of himself. Maybe because he hasn't thrown up or pissed himself. Or maybe, maybe he was the smart one out of everyone here. Edmund knew that going against these geeks was a bad idea. And being the smart one, the only one who's still alive and normal kind of made him feel more like a man now. Edmund, facing his first and only kill during this chaos, he definitely felt bad for killing Sweeney. But then again, the asshole did torment Edmund throughout high school, and the idiot did admit that he was going to kill as many geeks as he can before they kill him. It's not like Sweeney wouldn't be dead anyway, which is why he's not going to need the keys to that cool car outside. But there was still the weight of guilt within Edmund. That what if he did things differently? So far Edmund lost his mother, father, his little brother, his neighbors, all his school friends. They're all dead. All that weighing in on his conscience. That's when Edmund decided no more. This time Edmund is going to take a different path. He's going to do things differently, something he should have done the first time. He's going to go to the next city and warn everyone that the geeks are coming.
confess. Some of you would find it enjoyable seeing Edmund running through the streets screaming that the clowns are coming. The clowns are coming. Imagining the stupid looks on people's faces when seeing some weirdo screaming that the clowns are coming to eat and rape everyone. <laughs> Lakeside was about 40 miles away from Palmer, a 30 minute drive for Edmund with Sweeney's car. Regardless of Edmund's efforts and warning everyone, no luck. Even when deciding to do the right thing, Edmund still can't do that right. So, when it crossed Edmund's mind that maybe going to the police might be the better option, I guess he got a little sidetracked when coming up on a biker bar. Skid Saloon. Bikers. Bikers kick ass. Like that biker show on Netflix. It took some courage, but he did it. Edmund just ran up to the toughest looking biker and spilled everything. The looks on their faces when seeing this kid talking about geeks, clowns, raping and eating his family, friends, everyone, even his crush turning into one. Which is cool because she's still alive, but sucks because of how she would want to eat his face off. The biker that Edmund ran up to was actually the leader of the biker gang that frequents the saloon. His name was Ricky. They call him Tricky Ricky. Edmund wasn't for sure if Ricky believed him or not. Don't know. Maybe Ricky had nothing else better to do that day. and decided to amuse himself by taking this kid and a few other guys to check out Emerson. Assuming that they were going to have some fun by making an example out of this kid for being stupid. Does the ocean view still look crystal blue? Does the rising sun in the morning sky look the same to you? Is a friendly smile much too hard to find? Have we lost our sense of brotherhood? With all mankind Jesus doesn't live here anymore God damn The shit Ricky had seen in his days I mean, we're talking about some serious shit But fuck Nothing like this When they reached the circus in Emerson Ricky was not prepared to see an orgy of rape, murder, cannibalism torture and self-mutilation. Kid was right. These were some sick-ass motherfuckers. And they're infectious, like the zombie movies. And they're mobile, going city to city. Alright, shit just got real. Ricky sending one guy to scout the highways and another to scout the roads between Lakeside and Palmer, while he and Edmund head back to Lakeside. Looks like a war is coming. And they're going to need some heavy ordnance and a lot of help. As soon as they got back to the skit saloon, Ricky made a few calls and within two hours, bikers and biker gangs from all over started gathering at the saloon. Not that it mattered, but God, Edmund couldn't get over how it smelled terrible, especially with a lot of bikers together. But man, did they bring some heavy firepower. Oh yes, it was definitely going to be a war. And seeing how a war was coming, why not throw a party? I think we can give Edmund a little credit for the outcome of his previous decisions. That Edward here is starting to grow a pair. Drinking and smoking. You know he never tasted alcohol? Never smoked a cigarette before? Too afraid that his mom and dad will find out. Which is kind of strange. Because even though he never smoked, Edmund just could not get over the strange smell and taste of these cigarettes. They were, um, special cigarettes. And guess what? I guess we can finally celebrate the spoils of Edmund's misadventures. Our boy Edmund finally got to pop his cherry. Her name was Nicole. She had a really nice ass. Now the guy punching the shit out of Edmund is Nico. That's Nicole's boyfriend. You see, there's this biker code that these guys share their women with other bikers. And Edmund here, he's not a biker. Only screaming skulls can tap that ass. 
If Edmund hadn't smoked too much of them strange cigarettes, he would have pissed himself and passed out. Except he didn't. And Nico, seeing the kid laughing it off, knowing that he's about to get his face kicked in. <laughs> Stupid kid has balls. I guess this could be an easy fix for Nico. I guess they'll just have to make Edmund a member. So not only did Edmund drink, get high, get laid, but also join a biker gang in one day. Got the tattoo to prove it. You're a man now, Edmund. And now comes reality. The true horror of Edmund's adventures, where Edmund faces another moment where he must choose between the act of courage or cowardice. When word came in that the circus was coming to Lakeside, that's when Edmund's confidence was shaken once again. Alongside with his new brothers and sisters, armed and ready to take on an army of cannibalistic geeks. Even though these bikers were armed to the teeth, and Emma got the ride with Rico, something about all this felt no different than when he joined Joe Riggs and the other cool kids in Palmer. Edmund just couldn't shake away that feeling that he was heading into a losing battle. Oh yes, the odds look great with these bikers and their firepower, even when watching them mow down the geeks. But something about all this, something was wrong. Every fiber within Edmund wanted no part in this war. It was like he wasn't made for this. Death was inevitable. Which begs the question, why? Why bother fighting against something when there's no victory? Everyone is going to die. Except those who choose to run and hide, getting to live and see another day. When one of the geeks leapt onto Rico, causing the bike to crash, Edmund was thrown off to the side where he fell into the stream below. Rico died fighting off the geek, whereas Edmund skinned his knee. Last thing Edmund remembered was hearing Ricky trying to draw them out into the field so that the bikes could run circles around them. When Edmund got back up, immediately he started running towards the tree line, once again hiding while observing the war from a safe distance. Thank God. There's so many bikers. Bikers, biker gangs, not just the screaming skulls, but the snake heads, double guns, and the black crackers. Emma never heard of these guys. Thank God there's so many bikers, and that Emma is safe from these geeks. Even though Emma's heart is screaming for him to go, to join and defend his new brothers and sisters. Well, actually, Emma's heart wasn't in this either. Let's just cut the bullshit. Edmund Winkathorpe is a fucking coward, which is too bad when seeing Nicole being chased down by a clown with no pants. Now you may not see it, but there's another horror revealing itself. A growing fear within Edmund when seeing Nicole. Thoughts of courage, muddled by these thoughts of his hands on her beautiful ass. Oh God, Edmund must be a psychopath. How could he be thinking of her that way when she's about to get raped and killed by a clown? He's not a pervert. Not a pervert. Not a pervert. Edmund watching her from a safe distance. His thoughts screaming for her to shoot him with that gun. Must have run out of bullets. But not you, Edmund. And seeing the clown grabbing Nicole by the hair, fear was now getting the better of Edmund. The urge to do something stupid becoming stronger. The fear of standing up against reality, knowing of the consequences. In this world, courage will get you killed. There are no heroes. But no, Edmund is not a pervert. And Edmund doesn't want to be a fucking coward anymore. He's got a good thing going on here. For once, Edmund's going to do things differently. He's going to be a hero. He's going to kill this fucking clown and save the girl. When Edmund got the clown's attention, he was shocked when the clown called him Yellow Belly. Holy shit, Edmund did not expect to see that it was Joe. Joe Riggs. And just as Joe began running towards Yellow Belly, that was when Edmund blew up Joe's head. Congratulations, Edmund. You killed the most popular senior in Palmer. You got your second kill. Another high school bully with a 12 gauge boomstick. But what about Nicole? Edmund seeing her body. Did he save her? Did she turn geek? Edmund cautiously approaching her. 
his shotgun loaded and ready, just in case. That was when Nicole suddenly woke up screaming, scaring Edmund and pulling the trigger, resulting with Nicole being Edmund's third kill. Oh no. It looks like Nicole wasn't a geek. Oh, Edmund. You sad, sorry, pathetic waste of human flesh. Such a disappointment. You tried so hard. So damn hard. And now look at you. And Edmund putting the shotgun into his mouth. Accepting himself for what he truly is. A coward. And no longer wanting any part of this journey. He's just not cut out for this world. That's when a voice intervened. Urging Edmund to not pull the trigger. Standing next to Edmund was this guy. Introduced himself as Harold. Harold Lore. Runs a party store down south. Or did. But that's not important right now. What's important is that Harold thinks that this kid must be the smartest person he's seen all day. The last thing he wants to see is this kid fuck it up. You know, Harold never seen anyone blow their head off before. Has a nice appeal to it. But seeing this kid, don't know. Something about him that Harold found interesting. Like seeing a little bit of Harold in him. I guess we can call it fate. Edmund Wickethorpe, you are not a coward. There's a power within you. An urge to take what is rightfully yours. That one day, Edmund Wickethorpe can easily be a ruler of this world. Yes.